to Barbara's Podcast. This is the show for women, all about health, nutrition, and wellness. It's the show that will empower you and inspire you to create a healthier lifestyle. Hello and welcome. In today's podcast, I will be having a chat with a very good friend and classmate that lives in Palestine. So welcome, Fida. Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you live and what you do. Thank you very much, Barbara. It's great to be uh, with you here. Uh, I am a uh, Palestinian writer uh, and I'm based at the moment uh, between Ramallah in the West Bank and my village uh, Fasuta in the Galilee uh, in Israel. So um, I write uh, for a living and I also work as a news editor with Al Jazeera. Oh, wow. You've... You've gone a long way since we were last together at school. <laughs> yes, I did. I Amazing. Did. Yes, and for uh, our listeners, uh, as you said, uh, Barbara and I know each other from uh, school in Cyprus, uh, and I still very much have a connection with Cyprus and visit my friends there, uh, and uh, that's the background for, for how we know each other. <laughs> Which we love it when you come and visit. We Thank always you, welcome you, Fida. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> so what challenges do you face living in a war-torn zone? It must be quite difficult. Um, you know, tell us about it. Uh, so basically, I think the, the biggest uh, factor is the ongoing stress, uh, the uncertainty uh, of it all. Uh, in uh, Ramallah, where I live, uh, there's a very difficult political situation and there are also frequent uh, incursions and clashes uh, between uh, Palestinian protesters and the Israeli army. Uh, and uh, we live in a, in a very uh, uh, tense uh, environment, which uh, obviously reflects on our life, on our well-being. And uh, it causes really one of the greatest challenges uh, in navigating our day-to-day -day, uh, well-being and health as well. Could you go into a little bit more detail how it does challenge you or how it may affect your health? Uh, can, for example, um, is fresh food readily available or, uh, you know, are there shortages from time uh, to time? As the, I think the, the biggest uh, challenge is in the, uh, the mental and emotional uh, stress it puts on you. Uh, as we all know, uh, during times of stress, uh, the challenge to uh, staying healthy, particularly with regards to nutrition and exercise and so on, becomes greater uh, because um, in times of stress, you know, our bodies tend to kind of uh, demand or, or, you know, we start having these cravings uh, for unhealthy, you know, unhealthier choices. Um, fresh food is available. Yes, it's, it's ready. And in fact, we have, you know, really lovely produce and so on from the surrounding villages, uh, and in the markets. But, uh, the bigger challenge becomes to maintain a sense of, uh, your own balance to, you know, stick to exercise, uh, and stick to nutrition. Even when, for example, you wake up and you hear, uh, you know, terrible news about, uh, deaths and incursions and clashes and so on. Uh, and that's been something that I've uh, had to, you know, learn to navigate uh, through the years. I can imagine, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners can relate to that, um, you know, the emotional eating and, um, yes, yes, you know, yes. using food for comfort. Yes. I yes. know you have struggled with your weight in the past. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me a little bit about how you overcame it, uh, you know, how you worked on the mental side, what you did with your nutrition. Yes, uh, actually I did, yes, uh, for many years. Uh, sadly, as I look back on it now, uh, I was stuck in a cycle of endless dieting, like many people are. Uh, I would go on extremely uh, restricted, uh, low-calorie diets and really, you know, suffer. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's very, very difficult. It takes a big toll uh, on you both physically and mentally. 
uh, and I would, you know, lose a certain number of uh, kilos. And then obviously you get tired and it's not really sustainable. As soon as I would stop, I would gain all the back, all the weight back. Uh, and yeah. the cycle would just go on and go on uh, until it, you know, it, it began to get really depressing. I mean, it really does take a toll on your mental health. Uh, and you begin yeah. to also obsess, uh, you know, you begin to obsess about all the different parts of your body and how this isn't good and that isn't good and so on. Uh, and it took me really, it took me a long, long time. Uh, and this is what I hope most other men and women, you know, don't, will not have to go through that people will yeah. sort of, uh, you know, see the light if you, if you can. I mean, I, uh, if you can use that phrase uh, earlier, but what yeah. I did eventually was to understand uh, that the concept of nutrition and even exercise falls within a larger concept of my well-being. Uh, and th the concept is very much related to balance. Uh, so I started taking uh, a more holistic approach to my life and, you know, understanding a little, you know, more about uh, healthy nutrition, not demonizing foods, for example, and really aiming for balance in terms of uh, the way I did it was a greater uh, number of meals throughout the day, but a smaller portion throughout. Um, and this was something that really helped me and it helped me over the long term. I managed to maintain uh, my weight and uh, to feel much better about myself. And also uh, I worked on my uh, mental perception as well. And I began to understand that, you know, we're not the shape of our bodies. We're not, you know, we're, we don't have to measure ourselves by this ruler that society seems to kind of inflict on us, but that really it's about being and feeling healthy and, and reaching a state where you feel in your body and mind that you're working at your optimum and that you're happy and balanced and free. Uh, and it took me a long time, Barbara. It really took a very long time for me to kind of come around to all of this. And there, really, it's only as a result of so much suffering you know, with all this yo-yo dieting, that in the end you, you start to see that something doesn't make sense and that you need to look at it another way. Yes, I agree with you. You know, um, I think there's a lot of fad dieting out there and people yes. get quite confused with the information. Yes. But it all comes down to what you just said, that seeing it from a holistic point of view Mm -hmm. um, not demonizing food, mm -hmm. um, seeing that everything is a question of balance. Yes. yes. And, um, and another point, actually, I wanted to make, Barbara, yeah. and I think uh, our friends in, in Cyprus will definitely relate. I think in the Middle East also, we, we do have uh, a culture of overeating as well in the sense that, you know, in yeah. all our social activities and gatherings, certainly here in Palestine, in weddings and parties yeah. and get together, there's usually far too much food, far more than anybody would need. And so, you know, you've also got to kind of navigate your way through that and, you know, sometimes resist the temptation to constantly and persistently overeat, you know, at, uh, wherever you turn, at weddings, at parties and so on, this, you know, particularly in the summer. For social example, gatherings. Social <laughs> gatherings. I mean, it's, it's really crazy the amount of food there is out there. <laughs> So, you know, th this is a feature also, something we, we need to think about, you know, the, the, sometimes you can be doing really well with yourself and then, and, you know, in social settings, you can feel really out of balance. But again, uh, it's a question of allowing yourself to sort of, you know, indulge a little bit from time to time without overdoing it. Uh, you know, so this is, this is also a, a factor that uh, people sometimes may overlook and they may strive for perfection. And, uh, you know, it yes. leads us on to another point. Trying to achieve perfection all the time is, is defeating as well. So we've also got to recognize that we're human and to treat food as our friend, not, not the enemy that we're constantly fighting. Um, no, so, it's not yes. the enemy. And yes. uh, I don't believe in deprivation. Yes. Exactly. Uh, for me, it's moderation. Exactly. Yes. Um, yes. yes. So... You know, it's not uh, eating the whole cake. It's having a you know a small a slice of cake uh, yes. within you know the whole the whole meal. You know, it's yes. part of a meal. Yes, and yes. not to demonize it. Yes, yes, and yes. see it as the enemy. I uh, I t I absolutely agree with what you've said. Mm -hmm. I think exercise uh, also exercise has helped me immensely, and um, 
I don't have to do anything really uh, intense. I find a lot of my friends, uh, for example, in Palestine will tend to be a little bit scared or worry, you know, that, you know, they don't want to lift heavy weights and they see it as something cumbersome. And, and I've always said to people for the last 20 years, uh, I've been walking, I've been walking and the walking has really, uh, you know, in many ways, it, I, I believe it's really changed my life. Uh, it's given me the time not just to do something healthy and to exercise my body, but also it's a wonderful time to reflect uh, or if I'm in the mood to put some music on and just unwind and exercise. Yeah. Uh, once I got used to it, I now can't live without it. It becomes a fundamental part of your life. Um, and that's something I'd really like to, you know, share with everyone, just the amount of joy and yeah. balance and, and really physical release that it also affords, especially for stress. Uh, so yeah. That's yeah, that's also something very important. Walking is extremely therapeutic, yes. especially if you're out in nature, you know. Yes, yes. It yes. does clear your mind. It yes. uh, releases stress. Yes, yes. And, you uh, exercise your body. There are so many benefits to walking. Yes, some people also uh, find that they're happier uh, when they have a walking mate. Uh, some of my friends do this together. I tend to lean more on the solitary uh, side uh, because, as you yeah. said, I use it as a time for unwinding and reflecting. Uh, but yeah. also uh, swimming uh, is also great if one uh, can, you know, has access or can make the time, even for a short swim. I also find that's very, very uh, uh, therapeutic and it really relaxes your body uh, afterwards. So, you know, it's, it's really a combination of, of different things, getting enough sleep as well which is a challenge sometimes in our hectic lives. Uh, but sometimes I find that, it, you know, that that's a crucial factor to start from. Uh, on the days when I don't have enough sleep, uh, I start to have cravings through the day because you're tired and your body is trying to make up for it, not always in, in a yeah. healthy way. So that, you know, going back to it, I think the holistic approach, the sort of looking at all the little pieces, and when you work on them all together, you do find that, you know, you start to feel better. Uh, and, and, you know, you, you start to think that it's much more about what I only what I choose to put on my plate. It's also taking care of yourself mentally and emotionally and physically in other ways as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's what I teach a lot of my clients is it's a system. Yes. I have, um, basically, you know, a healthy lifestyle system that you add in, you know, your exercise, um, you know, your fruit, a salad meal a day, yes. um, herbs, uh, supplements, and yes. you, you build it into your life. You create a little lifestyle system and that way they turn into habits. Yes. And, and we're you don't very forget. Lucky. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We're very lucky also, uh, Barbara, I always say this to my friends, having lived abroad uh, in Canada and in the UK and so on, uh, in the Middle East, we're very lucky also that we still have, you know, uh, uh, produce uh, readily available at hand. Often also it's the produce that you're getting in season, uh, fruits and vegetables and so on. And we should definitely make use of that. Uh, you yeah. know, it's, it's a blessing because, you know, in many countries, you know, it has to be shipped. Uh, whether, you know, the weather doesn't permit, for example, to have so many kinds or to have things in season and so on. And I always encourage people to uh, make use of that because, you know, it's right there. It's at our fingertips uh, if we choose to use it. The markets, the uh, the fruit, the vegetables, there's so many varieties we get, especially in the summer, for example. Uh, and one can yeah. really, really make use of that to uh, eat a lot of, uh, make a lot of healthy choices. I find that when you do shop at a farmer's market and you go and buy your fruits and vegetables, that you automatically eat seasonally because that's what they have. Yes, yes. You know, with whether, where, when you shop at a supermarket, everything's on offer all year round. So you don't, you don't really become in touch with what's natural for that season. Yes, the farmer's market will, will definitely show you what's there and what's fresh and, uh, you know, what's in season, as you said, and that's, uh, you know, you reap immense health benefits uh, from, you know, from eating those uh, kinds of fruits and vegetables when they've just come out. Uh, it's also, it's lovely, like sometimes I'm able to 
you know, see friends or, you know, uh, organic uh, cooperatives. And sometimes you will literally get to the fruit or vegetables when they're still warm, when they've just been picked. And that's an incredible feeling also. And when you go there and you actually can smell, the yes. smell is so different. Yes. When they've and just the been picked. Yes. And the taste, yes. Yeah. I always seem to automatically just pick up a, a piece of fruit, whether it's a peach, and I'll smell it first before I buy them. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Yes. It's how uh, it, it all starts. It starts with sight, smell, taste. Um, so if it's not appealing, you know, you, you won't you 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 won't enjoy it, and I believe healthy eating is also part. It's it's enjoyment. A lot of people think that healthy eating is boring and tasteless, but it's not. Yes. yes. Um, is there some sort of cuisine that you follow, if any? Uh, yes, I generally tend to uh, cook a lot of our uh, uh, Palestinian dishes, which are you know predominantly uh, Middle Eastern. So. Uh, we use uh, a lot of vegetables in our cooking. They tend to be uh, an important base uh, from where we start. We have quite a few stews, uh, stews with, for example, rice uh, on the side. Uh, we also use, I also use uh, uh, meat or chicken for the protein. And we also eat uh, quite a few lentils uh, and beans, pulses and so on. So I tend to keep uh, a variety uh, of food and, uh, you know, going back to our balance, uh, Generally, it works out that there's a more or less 80-20 rule. So 80% of the time, I will, uh, you know, generally I find myself eating, um, you know, healthier sort of wholesome options and so on. And then occasionally, uh, if I'm out or, you know, uh, with friends or if there's a social event, then you also, we have the more Western uh, style of food. You may occasionally, you know, get a pizza or a burger with friends and so on. But most of my cooking at home tends to be uh, very much Middle East uh, based. Uh, I put quite a few things in the oven, for example, uh, such as fish or chicken. Uh, and I'll have my uh, fresh salads uh, on the side. Um, the nice thing is in Palestine, a salad is a feature pretty much uh, in every meal. So we're really into eating yeah. our vegetables. In the morning, we'll always have our chopped cucumbers, chopped tomatoes, peppers, and so on. Um, so, you know, vegetables are an ingrained part of our uh, food, which I believe is the reason also that we do find most people are uh, quite healthy, um, you know, in our societies. Yeah. It's only uh, in, in the recent, uh, you know, in the last decade or so, with the huge advent of, you know, Western sort of prepackaged foods that people have started uh, having health issues uh, in this domain. Here's Lev Kubiak, the Vice President and Chief Security Officer at Pfizer, on the discussion, The Dangers of Counterfeits and How You Can Get Your Medicine Safely, sponsored by Pfizer. Criminal groups are putting very dangerous substances into what appear to be routine prescription medicines. And so we have a significant rise in the presence of fentanyl and methamphetamine. Listen to the entire discussion on WTOP.com. Search Pfizer. So. Yes, because a lot of the prepackaged foods are loaded with salt, um, you know, sugars, hidden sugars. Yes, yes. yes. And they're overly processed, you know, yes. full of trans fats. Yes, yes. And they make and that's them, what and really causes ill yes. health. Exactly. And they're tasty. Uh, they make them tasty with all the uh, sugar and the salt. So, you know, you have to be careful because I do find, for example, you sort of start craving certain things once you've had them. Uh, and it yeah. takes a while. It takes a while to unwind that. But also I find that, you know, after a few days of, of you know, eating, for example, healthy, balanced food, you start to enjoy it. And with time, you really your body starts to ask for that as well. Uh, yeah. So it's a question. It's a question of I think of being aware of how much of these things uh, you consume and really trying to limit them as much as possible. Because honestly, you know, they're great, but they do nothing for you body wise. In fact, they're they do the opposite. No, absolutely nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I they think do the mostly opposite. harm. They harm. Yeah, exactly. They mostly harm you. Um, uh, you know, and in the supermarket also, what I tend to do is I just, you know, I just walk past these aisles, uh, Barbara, I'm not really interested. I mean, I will, you know, go 
to the to the aisles that I know where I can get the, the things that I I want to eat the healthy my healthy choices. And really, I mean, the chips aisles, you know, it's sometimes it's scary when you look down and you see, you know, about, I don't know, you know, 50 or 60 varieties of just, you know, chips and cookies and all sorts of stuff and, and soft drinks and so on. And you feel bad. I sometimes feel bad for just the sheer space that's taken up in our supermarkets and shops on things like this. Uh, really, it's, you know, it's probably about 30 or 40 percent of the of the display space. Uh, in your average uh, supermarket or shop, so you know it. It really does take a lot of uh, of your own awareness to sort of stay away in the in the lodge from these things. And there, you're you're surrounded by it. Yes, yes, yes. Everywhere you go, um, everywhere you go, you'll yes. you'll come into you know. Yes. Yes. Do you have any favorite spices that you use? Because um, herbs and spices play a large role in health. Mm -hmm. They are very high, you know, they're antioxidants. They offer all these um, medicinal benefits. They they can be antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, or antifungal. Yes. Um, do you use, do you drink any as teas or add them into your cooking? Uh, yes, uh, most of our cooking is centered around uh, uh, a few basic spices such as uh, cinnamon uh, and uh, allspice, and we also okay. use uh, we also use a bit of cardamom and um, uh, just a tip. I will try. I will remember the English name, but also uh, we do use uh, occasionally nutmeg. Of, uh, nutmeg, yes, nutmeg. Uh, we also use a bit of uh, um, uh, black pepper occasionally, and we uh, use the hot peppers uh, with some stews uh, and such. Um, on the drinking side, yes, uh, chamomile and uh, anise are a favorite, especially in the winter. We also make a lot of use of za'atar, which is uh, wild uh, thyme. Uh, we use that both. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, we use it both in food and also as a drink. It's a very refreshing drink, summer or winter. It's lovely. It's very soothing as well. And it's also got uh, medicinal properties uh, for time. Uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, we do use, we use quite a variety. I mean, we have different uh, spices. We use a little bit of curry also when we make shawarma, for example. Uh, there are healthy ways of making shawarma where you don't have to add the fat. You can simply uh, make it at home in a frying pan with very little oil. And it's nice because you can add uh, tahini sauce to it, which is healthy as well. And you can have your chopped vegetables yeah. and so on with it. Uh, we do use, yeah, we, we are, we do use quite a few uh, spices actually. And some people use, use more than others uh, in, our, in our cooking. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to hear that. Yes, yes. Uh, what inspires you in the kitchen? How do you keep cooking fresh and fun? Uh, I think I'm inspired just when I, uh, you know, when I, for example, sometimes I look things up on the internet and I try something new, but in the kitchen, I like the feeling of having, uh, you know, sort of after I've done my shopping and organized everything and I open the fridge and there are my vegetables there and there are my fruits and they're laid out nicely and you just, you know, you get into the, the groove. Uh, you yeah. know, I always, I always try and do this. I always try uh, to to shop in advance and to always have things uh, there and they're ready and so when you're in the mood you know you, you've got your things and also I make a weekly plan uh, and this helps me yeah. to feel you know that everything is there I know what I'm going to make uh, so that when you're hungry you don't have to start reaching for things to to you know to quell your hunger you know in advance you know I'm going to make this for dinner uh, and and you do that but uh, really you know the fact when I when I bring my things when I organize them and they're there uh, and I can see yeah. the colors uh, and I've got my spices next to me, and you know, you just you get yeah. in the mood and you start. You know, I think so. that's a very important aspect to being healthy, and uh, when it comes to healthy eating, is being organized, having the healthy ingredients in hand, you know, yes. having them in the fridge, having them in your cupboards, because when you don't, that's when you'll start ordering takeout food, and you yes. know. Uh, eat things that you really shouldn't yes yes another thing i find uh, barbara i simply 
I've now really tried to limit the things, the sort of snacks and so on, the unhealthy ones particularly that I have in the cupboards. Because if it's in the yeah. cupboard, you're going to go and eat it. So I try and, you know, bring, let's say that, you know, I suddenly have a craving for something. I will generally do two things. Sometimes if you wait, the craving will go away. You'll be basically hungry. And when you'll eat your proper food, the, fading, the craving will go away. And at other times, if I really feel like, I don't know, a certain bar of chocolate or a pack of chips or whatever, I will go and buy the smallest size available and buy only one. And you eat that and yes. you'll often find that you don't want any more. Previously, what I, what I would do is I'd say, well, okay, I'll buy three or four and keep them in the cupboard. The other three you usually don't want. Once you've satisfied that craving, you don't want, but you end up over the next few days eating them anyway. So this is a, an important tip that I share. Because with they're friends. at the back of your mind. Exactly. exactly. So <laughs> End in your crazy. cupboard. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you're sitting there in the evening after a long day's work and you're thinking, hmm, what can I eat now? <laughs> you know. So <laughs> There's so, that little chocolate waiting for me in the cupboard. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so the idea is not to have it waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> Get rid of the temptation. <laughs> Get rid of the temptation. Yeah, and you will find, honestly, well, like usually you will find once you've satisfied that little craving, generally you will not want it again a day or two later. Uh, so that, you know, over the long term, that's a lot of saving as well in terms of unhealthy food you're putting in your body or, you know. Yeah, but there's also healthier, healthier choices. For example, I know that you can make a healthy chocolate mousse with some mashed avocado and a awesome. little bit of maple yes. syrup or, or, or a honey. And, yes. you know, there are, there are healthier alternatives. You know, you can make, um, for example, oat cookies with, you know, dark chocolate and turn them into a healthier version of a chocolate chip cookie. Yes. Another which is actually thing. good for you. You know, there exactly. are so many healthy recipes out there. It's yes. just putting in that little bit of extra effort to, to make them to make them and also i find uh, a very good uh, choice that i often i always have uh, on my table in a little box are dates uh, dates i find are lovely because you know they're nutritious and it's also an immediate snack on hand when you really want something sweet um yeah and typically because they're so sweet you will not i i generally don't have more than one anyway uh, of you know of the larger variety but they're they're incredibly nutritious uh, and there's something immediate, you know, when you really want something uh, quickly. Uh, here in Palestine, we get really great uh, dates from the south. We have, uh, you know, the desert in, near Jericho. And uh, you have, you know, many, many palm trees. So you'll get really lovely sort of fresh varieties of both uh, uh, fresh and dried. Uh, and so I, I always have those at home. I'm quite envious of that fact because dates are my favorite. And the thing is, I can't stop at just one. No. <laughs> They're my Moorish yes. food. <laughs> yeah, I th it's okay. So I, I think, think I'm the okay one who buys dates in a little... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yes. buy too many of them because I know I'll finish them. <laughs> yes, 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 they are. Yes, uh, dried fruit is also uh, nice, but uh, I'm careful with it as I realize, you know, it's, it's a lot of... Uh, a sugar in one pack and also i enjoy fresh fruit so generally i would just have the the fresh uh especially in the summer i mean in the summer it's really lovely yeah. we, we have i think about 25 varieties at least throughout the summer of fruits and stuff so it's really a little heaven if one if one stays to attuned to it oh, it's very nice yeah i know mm -hmm. that's very nice <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is great, Babs. We're getting hungry now with all this talk. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I didn't manage to have breakfast yet. <laughs> yes, yes. I hope our readers now won't be running off to find the next meal. <laughs> our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> so, Fida, tell me, um, with your food struggles, how do you avoid it? Or have you had to come up with developing healthier coping me uh, mechanisms uh, for times you know, the of mental stress. side of things yes yes uh, the mental side for me is also a challenge because my work is uh, as a writer and editor so i'm spending long uh, hours at the laptop and they are long hours of focus you really it's it's you know it's uh, uh, work which takes up a great deal of mental effort 
So I will often find myself, you know, feeling genuinely hungry. My body is in need of replenishment and particularly having sugar cravings. Uh, the way I found to counter this, and, you know, different things will work for different people. Some of my friends, for example, are much better when they follow their, you know, three uh, uh, meals a day uh, on a particular schedule, and they're just happy and comfortable that way. I tend to have five or six smaller meals throughout the day, and I find it keeps my blood sugar more regular, uh, and it keeps me from uh, overeating at any point because I generally try not to let myself get to the point where I'm very, very hungry. Uh, I, because when that happens, I'm very cranky. I can't focus on my work and so on. So I tend to go for the, you know, I tend to eat every, for example, two or three hours. Some meals will be a little bigger than others, but um, I find that by the end of the day, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable uh, and it helps me to keep the overeating in check as well. Uh, in yeah. terms of stress, particularly with bad news or with, you know, just the overall stress around you, I, I tend to rely on uh, warm drinks. Uh, so I'll make a nice cup of herbal tea. Uh, I will also drink coffee. I mean, I have coffee two or three times uh, a day. Coffee is my uh, thing also because I also have low blood pressure. So the coffee also helps me uh, to be in balance. And I find also something about the ritual of the coffee is soothing in and of itself. Um, I'll have the, you know, three, for example, small cups of our Arabic coffee, which is similar to the Greek one, only darker roasted. Yeah. I'll have it without sugar. And uh, I enjoy that. It's something that grounds you as well. Uh, so, you know, over time, uh, Barbara, you know, especially when you live in a prolonged uh, stress situation, you do learn ways of, of uh, coping with it uh, and trying not to let it, take it, let it take too much of a toll on your body. Although obviously at times... Uh, that becomes, you know, a more difficult challenge to achieve as well. It can be, I think, one of the largest uh, challenges to overcome when it comes to, uh, you know, um, healthy eating, healthy living. Mm -hmm. It's breaking those bad habits that we form, and they could have yes. been formed from when we were children, you know, and that we yes, carry yes. them with us into yes. adulthood. Yes, for example, one of the things uh, when I was young, you know, my, my parents would often reward us with chocolates or sweets. And that's fine because, you know, that's that's the way, uh, they, you know, probably they were brought up as well. So, uh, you know, now, for example, I will reward myself with other things. Uh, you know, if, if, for example, I've just had a great achievement at work or whatever, I will, you know, also seek out other things. I might buy something nice to wear, for example. I might treat yeah. myself to a trip to somewhere I haven't been before. Uh, you know, you, you start slowly but gradually. You start sort of finding a more balanced uh, approach to life. And sometimes if I want to reward myself with that piece of chocolate cake, I will do it. But, you know, at least with time, I've managed to break that, you know, immediate association that food needs to be the, the ultimate reward for everything. Um, it's not it's mm, not because life mm, is made up of so many other things many other things yes yes and so you know br breaking those little associations as you said Barbara that we formed in childhood and so on uh, breaking those little associations takes time but ultimately it's worth it yes so we're coming to the end and I'd like to ask you what does being ridiculously human mean to you Oh, that's an interesting question. Ridiculously human, I suppose. I mean, you know, having, <laughs> having, having those moments where you think, oh, today is just a bit more of a challenge and I'll just let myself sit on the couch and feel sorry for myself and have some <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> oh, that's and... definitely being human. <laughs> yes, or, you know, I'll just call a friend and whine and whinge a bit and they'll understand and then... <laughs> You know, tomorrow is a new day. <laughs> yeah, ridiculously human. You know, Barbara, also, I mean, I used to, I used to fall into the trap uh, for many years of uh, society's, uh, you know, sort of uh, directions, if I can put them in, in sort of ellipses to yeah. us on, you know, on what, for what constitutes attractive and what does not. And it's taken me many years to really look at people and understand that each and every person is beautiful and that regardless of body shape. Um, the media does an awful, awful and systematic job in shaming people. 
And uh, part of being ridiculously human is that we're all really, we come in different shapes and sizes and it's the important part is in being healthy. Not the fact that somebody has wider hips or, you know, is, is a little bit, little bit, let's say, whatever, uh, overweight or whatever. I mean, it's really about the individual's health and how they're feeling and how they can perform in their optimal way. And I stopped, you know, it's really bad. We, we all used to judge people. Uh, I would say it honestly, you know, based on these things. And we used to judge ourselves all the time and it just becomes exhausting. And when you start, you know, accepting our humanity uh, and our, you know, yes, our, our times of weakness, our, you know, our inability all the time to strive uh, and attain perfection. And you start looking at life in a more balanced and kinder and more humane way. You find yourself in a much, much better place as well. Um, so, yes. 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 Well, thank you for that. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you for having me today. It's been really, it's been a pleasure having this conversation you know we don't often have time to delve into these issues in the in the you know hectic lives we lead <laughs> so thank you very much barbara it was lovely lovely having you uh, on my podcast thank you um you definitely had a lot to share with us uh with a lot of information and value i do hope my listeners um will love listening to this and will get a lot of value from it that they'll be able to apply to their lives and give them that little bit of um, inspiration and empowerment to make the changes that they uh, would like to make. I hope so. Thank you. To very improve much. their lives in any way, shape or form that they, they think is, is um, that applies for them. Yes, thank you, Barbara. And I do hope, yes, I do hope more and more people will find their own uh, journey uh, and yes. will, you know, will, will achieve these uh, slow but amazing changes uh, over time that really, really uh, can change your life and can make you feel so much happier and more balanced. And thank you for the work you do, Barbara, to, to enhance that and to make it happen as well. Well, thank you, Fida. Thank you. Uh, take care. Take care. Thank you, Barbara. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to Barbara's podcast. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter or e courses. Celebrate life and see you at the next episode.